Oh, that's a great question. Um, when I was a senior in high school, well, I have to back up. Um, my parents are not Southerners. My mom was born and raised in Chicago and my dad was born and raised out West. And so when I was a senior, I started looking at colleges and I looked at schools in Washington, DC and Dallas and Minnesota. And um, I hadn't looked at Wofford at all. And then my, then my parents said, well, do you wanna look at any colleges in South Carolina? Cause we were living in Aiken, South Carolina at the time. And so I said, sure. And so she recommended Wofford. She said, I've gotten this letter from this college that they're going co-ed and that, um, you know, that, but they're now taking applications from um, females. Okay. And so I came up and looked at it and applied and got a small scholarship and decided to go. I think the college officially voted in um, October of 75 to go fully co-educational. So the first class came in the fall of 76, and then I came in the fall of 77, and Dean Wallace came in the fall of 78. Gotcha. So okay. I think when I was a first year student, there were 60 women who lived on campus. What, what I were, the, a clear memory I have about that is the first night after our parents left and we went to the dining room that you, we walked in and y'all have been to Burwell so you know it's a big open room and that's when it hit, hit us that, oh my God, what have we done? <laughs> you know, that, cause when, in, you know, up until that day during orientation, you were mainly with your family and your roommate and her family. So you really weren't conscious of the fact that there were gonna be all these <laughs> and so that was pretty shocking and um but it, we you know we got used to it and you know you might be in a class with just one or two other female students as well as the other male students but the faculty were you know glad we were here and excited and so that was fun if you if you look if you talk to the archivist dr stone he mm -hmm. would tell you that the plan was for wofford to admit um women that who were in the top quarter of the class and then stop admitting the men who made up the bottom quarter so they were trying to become more selective and so each year from 1975 till today i mean your class we were the most selective ever so we continue to try to increase the academic caliber of the student body. And I think it started with that long range plan in the 70s to do that. And that was one of the good reasons to go co-ed was, you know, that women were, you know, you could find women who wanted to be successful and come here for our, the majors that we have. Well, um, there was none available at the time. We got involved in um, Campus Union was the student government as it is now. And so some of us ran for to be on Campus Union in my senior year, I was the secretary of Campus Union. And then um, we started a volleyball club team. And so we went to the athletic director and said, we want to reserve the gym for practice. And the only time he would give it to us was 6 a.m. because I think he thought we wouldn't get up early and we wouldn't do it, but we did it, we showed him. And so we, there's a picture I could show you, the first, this first volleyball club that I was on. And then after that, the college started women's volleyball. So that was kind of fun. And then there was an organization called the Association of Wofford Women. And my sophomore year, I was elected president of that. And then we decided to disband it. So, but it was, it was really just to get women together and make sure that their needs were being met. And it was kind of, we were the liaison to the administration to let them know what we needed. Um, I know of cases where um, some students felt like they were treated differently. I also know of cases where it was actually the upper class male students who had come to Wofford because it was all male and their dad had come because it was all male, mm -hmm. that they were angry and they weren't happy with women being on the campus. And so they would say rude things or there was one morning where we woke up and somebody had put an ugly banner on main building. And so, you know, we just, the women who were who stayed and remained um, and graduated were just resilient and we try to teach new students to how to be resilient because you know things are going to happen and you have to work through them
Great question. Um, Wofford is, I think, a much better college than the one that I came to and graduated from. It's, it's a better academic institution. It has a higher quality faculty and staff. Um, we're much more intentional and purposeful in our work for student development. And when I, when Dean Wallace and I were students, there were, um, you know, there was just a couple people working in the Dean of Students office. It isn't like it is today. And we didn't have professional staff on, in the residence life, uh, living up, you know, in the residence halls. So, so a great deal has changed, but we know a lot more about higher ed and the importance of it. And I think that what's interesting to me is since I've been the Dean of Students for 24 years, is how technology has changed y'all's life. That, you know, you actually had to go up to somebody and invite them to an event in the dining room, say, but now y'all just text each other or greet me or whatever and, and say, this is happening, this is the cool thing tonight, and that's where you go. And we didn't have that luxury. So, so it was, you know, we had a lot more face-to-face -face conversations, I think, than y'all maybe do. but. Um, I, it's just so much fun to be here and to see a vibrant campus life and to see a athletic program that went from being Division Three to being Division One and being successful at it. And, um, and it's been great to have the relationships with knowing students and that while they're here and then when they graduate, being invited to special events in their lives. It's just been a great opportunity. I've been blessed to be a part of it.